Hello, good morning. Welcome to my home. I'm Paula and you're on Homemaking with PhD. Come on in, join me in my kitchen. Grab a cup of coffee and, and come right on in. If you notice me looking up and looking down, it's just because I have got two things recording here, one live and one recording to go onto YouTube. So if I'm looking up and down a little bit, that's what it's from. And so come on in. Join me in my kitchen, okay? I've got some neat topics to talk about today. Good morning, Glenda. Y'all say hi so I know who all's here. My number's climbing quickly. So, yeah, hello everybody. So, welcome to my kitchen, come right on in. We're gonna be talking about today, getting back to basics, about my plan, my cleaning plan, and also uh, changing your mindset and doing it for yourself, okay? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Tara, Teresa, Rita, Gail, um, Glenda, Delene. Hello, everybody. So, I've missed you guys so much with the snow and everything, and it just kind of shut our town down, and um, so I've missed everybody so much. I've missed our sessions. I've missed the lives, so I'm so glad you guys are here. So, let's get started. There's no sense in putting it off any longer. I'm ready to get started with you guys. I've got some good things planned. We have a lot of new people in the group, and so I want to go over the basics, get back to the basics. I still have so many of my people, even some of my VIP girls, that they want us to go back over the things that um, that we start out with. Because every I have I had the neck issue one week, and then I had the snowed in the next, and so it's been a couple of weeks. And so let's get back to basics. Let's start from that beginning. But the one and most important thing that I want you guys to know, that I want to talk to you about today, is how we think about the job of being a homemaker. How we think about it is so much changes what we accomplish. Um, it changes it so much. So this is what I want you to think about, okay? Instead of thinking about your home and doing the chores and things that you have to do, instead of thinking about that as task, I want you to think about how blessed you are to have those things. You know, there are so many people in this world right now that would give anything to have a home like you have. They would give anything to be able to be worried about cleaning a house. And so, I want you to think about that. Whether you live in a mansion, whether you live in a one-bedroom apartment, whether you live in a camper, your home is your home, and God has given that to you. And there are so many people that doesn't have that. And I'm not going to cram Jesus down your throat. I don't believe that's the way you do those things. But this whole thing, this whole homemaking with PhD, is based on Christian homemaking. And so... If that offends anybody, this probably isn't the place that you want to be because I'm going to talk about him because he's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. And so when you think about what you have as a blessing, and, you know, God gives, okay, for those of us that are mothers, and God give you a child, he gave you that child, and that child is a blessing. And taking care of that child is a blessing and being able to do that there's so many that would love to have a child and couldn't and so when you have that child you think of that as wow what a precious precious blessing well you know what our home is that very same way so whenever you are vacuuming the floors for instance I'm so sorry okay spam risk it said um anyway sorry for that interruption there it goes again. I am sorry, ladies. Okay. Um, so, like, let's just take vacuuming, for instance. Oh, my word. I'm so sorry. Um, let's just take vacuuming, for instance, okay? So, let's say that you go and you get your vacuum cleaner out, and you're, you know, you just feel so, Ugh, I don't want to vacuum. I don't want to do this. This is the chore I hate the most. That kind of thing. Don't think of it that way. What I want you to think of it is, is while you're vacuuming, if you start thanking him, and you're thankful for the floor that you have, the home that has a floor in it. 
Thankful for the carpet. Thankful for the rugs. Thankful for the vacuum cleaner that is working. Thankful for the people who dropped the crumbs on the floor. Thankful for the food that you were able to have that ended up as some crumbs on the floor. And I guarantee you, if you start thanking him, one thankfulness leads to another. You're thankful for the bread, and then you're thankful that I'm thankful for that my husband got to work and buy it, and I'm thankful, you know, that kind of thing. And if you do that, you will be done vacuuming before you're done thanking him. I guarantee it. We can never thank him enough. But instead of looking at, I've got laundry to do, I've got housework to do, I've got this to do, and looking at it as a, a problem, it's not a problem. It's a blessing to even have a home to take care of. And if God has blessed you with that, whether you rent, whether you own, whether it's big, whether it's little, whether it's nice, whether it's you know very plain, it doesn't matter. There are so many people that would give anything to have that home. So instead of looking at it as such a hard thing to do, if you see it as a blessing from God and that you're taking care of that blessing, then you don't dread those things. I hope that makes sense. So I'll get off of that little soapbox and we'll move on to my plan. But please, whenever you think about what you have to do to take care of your home or to cook for your family and that kind of thing, please think of it as a blessing that God gave you and he's given you an opportunity to take care of it. And you are healthy enough to do it and you have like I said, a vacuum cleaner to vacuum with. There, there's so many people that would trade places with you in such a quick heartbeat because they want what you have so bad. So when we change our mindset to look at our homes as a blessing to take care of, then we don't have the dread, okay? Now then, with my specific plan, I started researching because I have rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia and my energy runs low a lot. So I knew that to clean and to keep my home the way I wanted to keep it organized and well stocked and clean, to do that, I needed to be able to break it up and do little bits at a time. Because used to, I could go from one end to the other and clean all day, and I can't do that anymore. I can't do an eight hour cleaning day. My body won't let me. But I can, I can dedicate one or two hours a day. I can. And any of you can follow my plan with an hour a day. And that blessing that God gave you, it's worth an hour a day, okay? So let's talk about my plan specifically, all right? So the first and most important thing that you need to do with my plan is the morning five and the evening five. I've talked about this a lot, but I wanna talk about it some more, okay? I have got some ladies that have just asked me, will you just go back over those and explain those? And I've got new people here and I need to do that. So let's talk about that. Those of you that are a Paula's planner, you have your sheet, your weekly plan. If you don't have one of these to refer to, grab a notepad and a pen. Just jot these things down. I, I promise you, if you will do the five things in the morning and five things at night that you can accomplish within 15 to 20 minutes, in the morning and 15 to 20 minutes at night, your life is gonna be so much smoother, your home is gonna be so much cleaner, and you're not gonna feel behind all the time, okay? So what I did is I researched several different cleaning plans. I watched several different kinds. And I watched everything from Fly Lady to The Secret Slob to, um, I think it's Minimal Moms. There was just so many different ones that I researched. and none of them fit my life perfectly and I didn't think any of them was as Christian based as I wanted it to be and that kind of thing and so I just kind of took from the best things from each one and made my own and so this is Paula's plan and so the one that's closest to me would be Fly Lady but I changed that up some too so um so I'm gonna go over it so every morning the first thing that you should do is make your bed. It is a proven fact that if you make your bed, you set yourself up for accomplishments all day. They have done research and research on it. So the first thing I want you to do is make your bed. 
The second thing, even if you're gonna be at home all day, get dressed down to shoes. If you don't wanna wear shoes that you wear outside in your house, then have a pair that you just wear in the house. Take a pair of tennis shoes, the comfortable ones that you wore last year before you bought your new ones, wash them, use, use them to wear in the house. Put some shoes on your feet. That's another scientific thing that is proven that if you, um, it is proven fact that it, when you put shoes on your feet, it tells your brain it's time to do something. Because all your life, even from a little child, when mama put your shoes on, or before you went to school, or before you went to work, that's something you had to do was put your shoes on. And it's in your brain, when you put your shoes on, you need to do something. I'll tell you another secret. If you put your apron on when you start to do housework, it will start triggering your brain that it's time to do something. It's just does it. All of our grandmothers did it for years and years. There had to be a reason. And so if you will get dressed, put on a little lipstick as my mama used to say, or lip gloss, brush your hair, brush your teeth, make yourself presentable, and get those shoes on your feet and put your apron on. Get ready to do your job. That's part of your uniform. Get ready to do your job. And it will trigger your brain to do more, okay? So, number one is make your bed. Number two is get ready head to toe. Now, number three should follow right behind that getting ready, to, ready head to toe, and that is to speed tidy your bathroom. It takes me longer to tell you how to do it than to actually do it, okay? So, what that means is put away your makeup, put away your hair products, have some Windex and paper towels under your sink, or have some bathroom wipes, whatever. Grab a couple of them, wipe out that sink, wipe out the countertop, and then wipe off your, uh, your toilets. Just a quick swish in the toilets. So number one is make the bed. Number two is ready head to toe. Number three is speed tidy your bathroom. After you've gotten ready in the morning, just clean it up, okay? And then number four is after you've gotten ready in the mornings, start a load of laundry every morning. One load of laundry from start to finish every day and it keeps Mount Washmore away. <laughs> and then after you have done that, you come on into the kitchen and start that coffee pot. And while it's making, empty your dishwasher because I need you to turn it on every night. If you don't have a dishwasher, make sure before you go to bed, you wash all your dishes and flip them over on a towel and let them dry. And the next morning, while those of us that are emptying our dishwashers, you'll be emptying your dish drainer. That's, that's the only difference. So a lot of people wanna throw that up as an excuse. They can't keep their dishes done because they don't have a dishwasher. Well, let me tell you a secret. I came up with this plan for a lady and it works great for her and I have spread it to more and more and it works great for them. Clean out one half under your sink. Put a dish pan under there. Just like those of us that have a dishwasher, we rinse off our plates like after breakfast and we stick them in the dishwasher. We rinse off our plates and we stick them in the dishwasher after lunch. When we start cooking dinner, we use measuring cups and stuff. We rinse them off and we stick them in the dishwasher. Well, you consider that dish pan your dishwasher because all we're doing is let them sit there till time to wash them. That's all you would be doing under your sink. So all you have to do is take you a dish pan or just a Rubbermaid container that is a larger, you know, like container that's deep and square even. Some type of container like that, clean out under one side of your sink or a cabinet right next to your sink and put that in there and that is your dirty dish disposal. So therefore your sink can stay shiny and clean all day long. And at the end of the day, you pull out that dish pan, sit it up on the counter, wash those dishes and flip them over to dry. The next morning you get up, if you have to get up 10 minutes early and you put them away. If you will do that, your sink stays empty. You can cook, you wanna be in the kitchen more. If you go in there, there are dirty dishes piled everywhere, it frustrates you. Nobody wants to wash dishes 10 times a day. So if you, you can use it just like those of us that have a dishwasher, all you've got to do is buy that dish pan, put it under your sink, and rinse your dishes off and stick them in it. At the end of the night, rinse that dish pan out, dry it, and stick it back under the sink, and it's ready for the next day. And you have a place to put those dishes all day, okay? Then wash them at the end of the day and flip them over to dry. Those of us that have a dishwasher, you put all of your stuff in there, and every single night, if it's got two plates or 200 plates, you turn that dishwasher on. It uses less water than running one sink full of dishes, and it sanitizes those dishes and it's a great thing. So 
turn it on every night. Nobody needs that food to sit on there that long, okay? So that's your five things for the morning. It does not take that long. So the number one thing I want you to think about is we change our mindset, okay? We think of our home as a blessing. That's what it is. There's so many people that would give anything to have what you have. And when God blesses us with that, then we need to consider taking care of it as a privilege, just like if he gives you a child or he gives you a wonderful husband or whatever, all the blessings that he's done for you, you treasure those blessings and you take care of them. You take care of that baby and that kind of thing. Think of your home that very same way. Take care of the blessing God gave you and do it with a thankful heart. And if you do that, the dreading of housework stops. You won't dread it anymore. It is, it is a thankfulness. If God blessed you with the home, it's a privilege to take care of it. It's not a chore. It's not a task. It's a privilege. Just like if he blessed you with a child or he blessed you with a husband, it's a privilege to be able to take care of it. And when you think of it that way, and when you're doing those chores, if you're thanking him for that home and for the people who've made the mess and for the person who wore the dirty clothes and that you had clothes to wash, if you think of it in that way, you stop dreading it and you enjoy doing it, okay? So I just want to throw that in there again. <laughs> and so then, um, so our morning routine is very simple. We'll take you 15 to 20 minutes. Make your bed, get ready head to toe, put on shoes, speed tidy your bathroom, give it a quick swish and swipe, start a load of laundry, and then go into the kitchen and empty your dishwasher. I promise you, I have timed myself and I have four bathrooms to swish and swipe, four. And I can do all four of my bathrooms, the wiping of the counter and the cleaning of the toilets in 10 minutes. And I can complete my morning routine. It takes two minutes to empty an average dishwasher, two. And if you're turning it on every night, there's not a lot in there. If you're completing washing those dishes every single night, you don't have many to wash. You only have to wash from that day if you don't have a dishwasher, okay? So that's our five morning routine. Now, our five nighttime routine starts as soon as dinner is over, okay? So when dinner is over, we clean our kitchen up from dinner and we wash the dishes, whether that be turning on the dishwasher and washing the pots and pans or washing everything that's under our sink in that dirty dish disposal that we talked about, okay? And then prepare for tomorrow. Look at your calendar, look at your planner, whatever. Look at the weather, what do you need to wear? Get your clothes ready, get them hung out. That just speeds everything up in the mornings, okay? Even if you're staying at home, put those clothes out. Like my, my uniform, as I call it every day, is either black, red, or gray shirt because I try to keep everything in our color theme for you guys. And I've bought several just V-neck t-shirts, like three red, three gray, three black, because that's the colors in my kitchen and that's I, it's just easier when you're filming to do that. And so, then I usually wear black yoga pants and my good Skechers tennis shoes and that are gray. And that's what I wear every day. And so I try to alternate it, red, gray, black, red, gray, black, that kind of thing. And so I hang those clothes out. Now, if I have a doctor's appointment or I'm going to run errands like on Thursday, I put out my jeans and a nice t-shirt or, or a nice shirt. And you know, it's a little bit different for that day. If I have a doctor's appointment, it's different for that day. And so that's what you need to to think about is look at the planner and, and lay your clothes out. Okay, so then the next thing is put away that load of laundry that you did that morning. Sometime throughout the day, whether you wash the load before you go to work, um, and around, as soon as you get home from work, you put it in the dryer, and then after dinner, you put it away. However you need to do it. If you're at home and you want to bam, 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 wash, dry, and put away in the first hour you're up, that's great too. But if you complete your dishes every night, turn them on in the dishwasher or wash them by hand and you empty it every morning and you do one load of laundry every day from start to finish that means to putting away not throwing on the couch whenever you complete one load of laundry a day and all of your dishes every night you will never have that piled up you'll never have that again and it's so nice every night when i go to bed i have not one stitch of dirty clothes and i don't have any dirty dishes they're cleaning the dishwasher it changes your life when you do those simple things. The last thing that I have on there is to wash your face and do some, some self-care. And then my special number five is to read my Bible, check my planner, and always kiss your hubby 
good night and tell him you love him. Tell your kids you love them, whether it's with a text message if they're married like mine, or call them on the phone, or whether they live in the house with you. Never, ever skip a day of saying good night and I love you. My family always says good night, God bless you, and I love you. My mother said that every night of my life, <laughs> every night. And so that's what I say. That's what my whole family says. But whatever it is, however you say it, if you tuck them in bed and kiss them good night, however you do it, make sure before you go to bed, you say I love you and that you thank God for that day and for those special people in your life and for that home. And when you start changing your mindset to my home is a blessing from God, just like my children, just like my husband, just, you know, and I'm to take care of it just like I take care of those things. And I'm to treasure it. And I'm to look at it that way. When you do that, it will change your life. It will change your home. It will change it. I'm telling you. And if you do my five easy steps in the morning and the five easy steps at night, those things keep your home on automatic pilot. It keeps it going. Now then, another thing I want to talk to you about is on our sheet, we have one task for every day or two or three. Just, you know, there's a different theme for each day. I don't care what day it gets done in, but those things need to be done every week. So if you want to jot this down and take notes on it, Mondays is our Monday makeover. That means take one hour and do a weekly home blessing. This is not a deep cleaning because we do that with zone cleaning. And I'm fixing to tell you about that. But the Monday makeover is I want you to spend 10 minutes on each one of these things. Change your sheets and spray your tubs down with something to keep soap scum from building up. You're not going to scrub it. You're not going to rub it. You'll do that during your zone time. But spray it down with scrubbing bubbles, vinegar and water, whatever. And then go and clean your floors, whether that be dust mop or vacuum or a little bit of both, but you don't spend more than 10 minutes on it and it's the main areas of your home, the main traffic areas. You're gonna do that deep vacuuming and in the corners and all that stuff and under everything when you're in that zone. But for every Monday, we do a quick reset of our home, okay? And so when you do that quick reset, it is change your bed and spray your tubs, the first thing. Then run the vacuum for 10 minutes, take 10 minutes to gather all the trash, take 10 minutes to feather dust the tops of the furniture. You'll do the polishing when you're in that zone. And then take 10 minutes to clean your mirrors and doors, and then 10 minutes to put the sheets back on the bed and rinse the tubs down. You do those six things, 10 minutes a piece, and you've spent one hour as a weekly home blessing, and you have reset your house. This does not mean dust every room of the house. This doesn't mean vacuum every room of the house. You'll do that with zone cleaning. This is the main high traffic pathways of your home, okay? So that is the weekly home blessing. I'll tell you what I did this morning. I changed the sheets on my bed, made my bed up. I sprayed down all of my tubs and all of my toilets and I wiped off the bathrooms. I let the spray sit in the tubs and I grabbed my little vacuum and I did through the living room and the kitchen and the mudroom area real quick, gathered up my trash, took it out, took a feather duster, did the living room and dining room and my bedroom, that's it, real quick, feather dusting. And then um, I went back and I rinsed down the tubs and the showers. I was finished in 46 minutes. Now my home is reset for the week. Very easy, okay? That's Monday. Tuesday is toss it and tummy plan. And what I mean by that is whatever zone that we're in, and I'm gonna tell you about that in just a minute, and I'm gonna try my best to keep you to about 30, 40 minutes, and we're at 23, so I'm gonna try to hurry. So the toss it and tummy plan is we take a three bin process. That means you take three garbage bags, three laundry baskets, I don't care, and in those, you label one of them throw away, one of them give away, and one of them put away. But you never leave that zone that you're in because that's where you waste time when you want to declutter. You're running all over the house because you're going through something and this shirt belongs in the kids' room and it's piled up in your room. And then you go to the kids' room to put it up. And then you find something in the kids' room and you get distracted and you're wasting your time. You're going to spend 30 minutes decluttering in the zone that you're in. So that means you're, if you're in the master bedroom, go to your closet and start pulling out things that you don't wear. If you're in the kitchen and it's kitchen zone time, you start looking through your silverware drawer, looking through your Tupperware cabinet. 
if you have bowls and lids that don't match, that kind of thing. And for 30 minutes, you pull items out that you don't need in there anymore. And quickly, you make the decision of donate it, throw it away, or it goes in another room to be put away. At the end of that 30 minutes, you put the throwaway stuff in the trash, you put the donate stuff wherever you keep that in the garage, in the back of the car to go to Goodwill or wherever, and the put away, you walk around into the house and put it where it belongs. But you wait to the end of your 30 minutes to do that, okay? If you do that in each zone, you're doing that once a month in each area of your home, and it never gets cluttered. Can you guys still hear me? For some reason, it said it was trying to reconnect. Somebody tell me if they can still see me. I'm sorry, don't know what's happening. Can you guys see me and hear me? Somebody please tell me because it said that I had bad internet connection for just a minute. Somebody tell me they can still see me and hear me. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, so, great. Sorry for that little interruption, don't know what happened. But, um... So, on Tuesday, I told you it was toss it in tummy plan. So, what that means is, is you do the three bin process in whatever zone you're in to declutter, okay? If you do that, and then you do the one item in, one item out, then that means if you buy a new shirt, you throw away one. If you buy a new pair of pants, you throw away one. If you do that, once you've decluttered, it'll never be cluttered again, okay? All right, so then on Wednesday, uh, also on the the toss it and tummy plan day that's on Tuesday, you will make a meal plan. You're not gonna write out a grocery list. You're not going to um, go shopping that day. All you're doing is writing down a plan for your dinners for every night of the week, okay? So that's what you'll do on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you're gonna clean out your refrigerator, use up what leftovers need to be used or toss them, throw them away, quickly wipe out the fridge, get it ready to receive groceries and stuff. And you're gonna make a list of the grocery items that you need. So you look through your pantry and your fridge and you look at that list you made on Tuesday and on Wednesday you make your grocery list. And then you also make a list of any errands you need to run, like pharmacy, uh, go to the drugstore, go to the bank, go to, you know, whatever, drop stuff off at Goodwill, make your list of errands, okay? Then on Thursday, is errand day and that means thoroughly stock your home you go and you buy what's on the grocery list and you run all your errands and then you come home and you wash those things and do some meal prep to get ahead of the game whether that's boiling eggs whether that's cutting up vegetables and washing them like i've done so many videos on that's what you do on thursdays and then the friday plan is clean out your car like just get out your garbage and stuff that's in it clean out your purse or bags lunch boxes and then spend one hour deep cleaning in your zone okay so now then real quick i'm going to go over what zone cleaning is and then we'll be wrapping this video up okay thank you for those who have stuck with me okay everyone will divide their home into five zones okay my zones are zone one is my dining room my foyer and my staircase that goes up into my game room and that game room area that's zone one for me zone two is my kitchen and I want it to be everybody's zones because that's the heart of the home and that's the first full week because sometimes on a calendar, we always start on Monday and that's zone one and then it goes zone two and you do that all the way down and every month has five rows. But like, look at the last one of February, there's only one day there, okay? And so, but don't worry because next month it'll probably have a full week and the one will be short. That's why we put the less used areas in these two areas, okay? are the ones that don't have to have as much detailed work. Like, but my zone one is my dining room, my foyer, my upstairs and staircase, and my front porch. That front zone right there, okay? And so, when I'm doing zone cleaning that week, I take one hour. On Tuesday, I take 30 minutes and I declutter in that area. And then on Friday, I deep clean for one hour in that area, okay? So, on that first week, I'm polishing the furniture in the dining room, I'm cleaning the glass on the uh, china cabinet, I'm cleaning the glass on my grandfather clock, I'm sweeping off my front porch, I'm dusting my staircase rails, I'm doing, I clean my vacuum good, uh, all that stuff I do in zone one. I spend one hour doing that, okay? Then, zone two is my kitchen. 
So like when you're in zone two, you're going to deep clean your oven, deep clean your microwave, deep clean your refrigerator, and maybe you don't need to do each one of them each month, rotate it out, and then you're gonna do your deep mopping and, and cleaning, dusting off the cabinets, that kind of thing. Um, that's what zone two is. Zone three for me is both of my children's bedrooms. They don't live here anymore, but we have one is the grandkids room and one is the room that I have my little office area set up for homemaking with PhD and crafts and things. And so zone three is my two kids' bedrooms and their two bathrooms. And then zone four, I like for it to be everybody's master bedroom and master bathroom. And I actually have an extra one because we've got a mud room, which is my husband's bathroom and then my bathroom. So his has the shower area, mine has the tub area. And so zone four is master bedroom, bathroom and closet, okay? Then zone five is your living room, okay? Um, so that's the way that, that my zones are laid out. I have someone who has a much bigger home. She's got a lot more bedrooms. Every single month, she does zone two as her kitchen, but she has made, like, she has 10 zones where we have five, and her number two and number, what would it be, five, or her second week of the months are always the kitchen. So she has a much bigger home, so she has to divide it up more. I have about a 3,000 square foot home, and I can accomplish mine just like this. If you have trouble dividing your house into zones whenever you're one of Paula's planners, I help you do that. I help you to get it divided out so it's so much easier to handle. So what I want you to understand is on Mondays when we do that quick tidy of our home, that is just like what you would do if someone called and said, I'm gonna be there in an hour. You do a quick cleanup because you're already swishing your bathrooms every day. That just needs to be done. And, but you just do a quick feather dusting or Swiffer dusting over the main areas of the home, a quick floor vacuuming of the main areas of the home and wipe up your bathrooms, take out your trash, just a quick tidy, no more than an hour, no more than an hour. I have four bathrooms and I did it all this morning in 46 minutes, I timed myself. That's a quick reset, okay? But when you're in that zone, that's when you polish the furniture in that area. That's when you move and vacuum under the couch and, or vacuum under the bed, that kind of thing. So if you follow that zone cleaning, you can deep clean in these areas one hour on Fridays. And you rotate which place you're doing that deep cleaning. And every month, your home is getting a deep cleaning and you'll never spring clean again. There'll be no need in it. So I had to do this because my health would not let me do it all at one time. And so it's, it's easy to do that, okay? And so all you have to do is divide that house into zones. On Tuesday, spend 30 minute decluttering in that zone. Throw away, give away, put away. And on Friday, spend one hour deep cleaning in there, okay? So on the list that I tell you about my plan, your morning routine and evening routine will take about 15 to 20 minutes for each one of them. Then your daily task that I have for each day takes about an hour. So I'm asking you, sometimes not even that, but I'm asking you to set aside an hour to an hour and a half for your family, for your home, to take care of the blessing that God gave you. Anybody can do an hour a day, anybody and you never spring clean again. You never have to clean from one end to the other again in the same day. And it's easy and it's easy to do. But the first thing you have to do is change your mindset to see your home and homemaking as a blessing. And when you do that and you see it as a blessing from God, when you do that, you won't dread taking care of your home. If you're watching on Facebook Live, thank you for staying and for watching and joining me. If you are one of my Paula's planners, thank you. If you're one of my VIP girls, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are watching and you're thinking, hmm, I just wonder what this is all about. I would just like to know. If you'd like to be mentored by me, private message me. I'd love to help you. Um, if you want to know what this more about this zone cleaning and this little sheet that I have made, let me know. I'll be glad to help you. If you're watching from YouTube, thank you so much for joining me. I'm brand new at that, and I'm trying hard to learn how YouTube all works and everything. 
Um, if you're on Facebook and you have not went and liked and subscribed my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate that because when I get to a thousand people, I can go live in there, but right now I can't go live yet. So I need subscribers. It's homemaking with PhD there just like it is on Facebook, okay? I have enjoyed talking to you ladies so much. Um, every morning when you're emptying your dishwasher or putting away your dishes, make it just automatically click in your head to make a plan for what's for dinner that night. Lay out the meat, start the crock pot, that kind of thing, okay? We're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about some of my crock pot bags maybe next week. I've had some people asking about that, but they just wanted to know about this, the, the program and stuff the new people did. So I needed to do this video today and just remind us all to reboot and get started. But if you will look at your home as a blessing and taking care of it as a privilege, because so many people would love to have what you have, then you won't dread doing these things and anybody can apply an hour a day, anybody. And I promise you, there's no more spring cleaning, there's no more mountain of dishes, there's no more mountain of dirty clothes, and you've spent an hour a day working in your home, and if you make up the crock pot bags that I tell you about, you'll have dinner ready when you get home. So let your crock pot be your friend if you work away from the home, and if you work from in the home. So put your aprons on and put your shoes on, and get your day started, and take care of what God gave you, okay? My name is Paula Dixon, and this is my Facebook page that is Private Homemaking with PhD. It's also my YouTube channel, Homemaking with PhD. I thank you so much for joining me, and um, I will be posting a video on Wednesday, and I think what I'm gonna do on it is talking about getting ready for spring, some little spring decorating, and um, we're gonna talk about that, and I'm also gonna probably talk about clutter attachment on Wednesday. I'll probably do that. And then on Friday, I have got some small business to focus on and I have got a lot of giveaways, my own giveaways and those. Now, if you are a VIP or if you have ever been a VIP and you're on my VIP page, I will also have lots of giveaways for the VIP girls, even more than on this page. Friday. They have collected. We've done a VIP swap thing, like where ladies have cleaned out things or had extra things, new books, new makeup item things that they got because they coupon and things like that, that they have donated to the VIP swap stuff. And those things we're going to be giving away Friday after we do the live here and do the small business. Okay. If you came in late, please go back and rewatch. If you're watching me live, Give me a one, post a one down there so I know it. If you watch me on the replay, give me a two so I'll know it. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, homemaking is the most important job you will ever do. Being a mother, a grandmother, and taking care of your home, that is the most amazing thing ever. And that is the best job ever. And um, it's the most important job. And so... Think of that home as a blessing and taking care of it as a privilege. So many people would love to have the worries of cleaning up a home because they don't have one. Okay? Thank God today for your home. Do something to take care of it today. Okay? If I can help any of you in any way, please private message me. I would love to mentor you. I have room for maybe, maybe two more VIP girls and probably about five more Paula's Planners. And so, um, that's right, Paige. I also am a, an, aunt, an aunt to the best niece ever. So, that's a hard job sometimes. <laughs> so, thank you all for joining me. Thank you for the support. I, I can't thank you enough. To my family that's watching, thank you. To my Aunt Kat, to my Aunt Pat, to my Aunt Helen, to Glenda, my, my sister from another mother, to my sister-in-law that's another sister to me, my brother's wife, Lisa, to my niece, Paige, to my daughter-in-law, Holly, to my daughter, Ruby Carroll, to some of my very special close friends, my golden girls and Miss Myra and those, Barnes, you know, thank you ladies for your support. It means the world to me. Pray for me and that, that this is a, I believe this is definitely a 
maybe like my my mission, my what God wants me to do. I've never felt more joyful doing anything in my life than this. And when people send me messages about how that I changed their life and my system helped them to get control of their chaos and their hoarding and that kind of stuff, it's amazing. I am talking and helping ladies that are from 32 different states of the 50 states and I'm in three countries. I wanted to have 500 followers in the first year. That was my goal and I hit it in 90 days. That's God's speed. That's my God. So I believe it's my calling and I believe it's what he wants me to do. And I know that he wants you to consider your home a blessing and a privilege to take care of it. So this is Paula Dixon with Homemaking with PhD. I will see you. Yeah, it's Aunt Potter, Canaan, hello. Um, I will see you next time. And if you're seeing this video on YouTube, Thank you. So you guys like and subscribe, okay, on YouTube and you guys on Facebook. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Message me if I can help you in any way. God bless you all. And you'll see another video on Wednesday and I'll be live on Friday with some giveaways. A lot of them, okay. If you're interested in being a VIP so you can get a lot of the great gifts, message me about that too. All right. I'll talk to you later. I have a lot of sessions today. I can't wait to talk to you ladies. God bless you all and have an amazing day. Bye.